Years ago, gods descended on the mortal plane and decided to live amongst them, in exchange for not using their powers in a lesser plane. They gave humans the blessings to fight the monsters thus creating a new class of human, familia. Bell is one of such humans who joined a new family under the rule of Hestia, a small goddess with big assets. Bell has just started his journey into the dungeon when he accidentally heads to the fifth floor where he is attacked by a minotaur, a monster only found deep in the dungeon. Fortunately for Bell, a powerful sword mistress, Eyes saves him by slaying the monster. After the incident, Bell falls in love with Eyes as he heads to the guild and asks Ina, a helper there about Eyes. She tells him of what she knows about Eyes, who belongs to the goddess Loki family. After exchanging the crystals he got in the dungeon, Bell returns home to a torn down church where he is greeted by Hestia in a rather casual manner. Although their condition is miserable they both enjoy each other's company. At night, Hestia updates Bell's status by using her blessing when she finds out about his new skill, Lyris Freeze, an exceptionally rare ability that makes the user grow at an exponential rate as long as he is madly in love. However, she chose to hide this from him and not tell him about it. The next day, Bell is on his way to the dungeon when he is stopped by a kind elf, Sir, who works in a restaurant. Sensing his empty stomach, she gives him breakfast at the cost that he will come to their restaurant at night. At night, Bell returns from fighting in the dungeon. Hestia as usual updates his status and shows him the result which surprises Bell as his stats have grown past his expectations. After this, he heads to the restaurant where Sir serves him the food. As he is eating his spaghetti and praising Italians, Eyes and her family enter the restaurant and sit at their usual table. As they are eating food and drinking one of their members, Bete asks Eyes about Bell who almost pissed under the presence of Minotaur and had to rely on Eyes to save himself. He also asks Eyes if she will choose him or Bell if he were ever to confess to her. Bell hears all of this from the side and feels shameful and runs away without paying the money. Eyes notices this and chases after him but he has run away to the dungeon to turn his anger onto the monsters. After fighting the whole night, he returns home all bruised up and falls into Hestia's arm. He tells Hestia that he wants to get stronger as Hestia doesn't say anything and just nods at him. The next day, Hestia informs Belle that she will be away on work-related stuff for two to three days so she won't be home and asks him to stay safe. While Hestia is gone, Belle heads to the restaurant to pay his debt and then heads to the dungeon to farm some eggs. Hestia is also headed to a party of gods where Freya, one of the strongest gods, has invited everyone for dinner. At the party, Hestia meets Hephaestus, another famous god known as Divine Blacksmith, and begs her to craft a weapon for her. Hephaestus at first refuses but after countless pestering and begging by Hestia, she gives up as she agrees to make a weapon for her. Hephaestus asks for whom she wants the weapon to be crafted, to which Hestia replies that it's for her familiar bell. Hephaestus agrees to make a weapon and she asks Hestia to help her make one. After two entire days of hard work, they manage to create a knife worthy of being wielded by Bell, the protagonist. Hestia is happy but Hephaestus reminds her that she needs to pay the debt whenever possible. On the other side, Bell is headed to the dungeon when one of the girls at the restaurant stops him and asks him to give Sir's purse to her as she forgot it at home. Bell accepts the mission as he heads to the festival where Sir is currently at. However, after arriving at the festival, Bell finds Hestia standing there too who grabs him and runs off to spend some time with him. While they are eating and enjoying the festival, in a restaurant nearby, Freya and Loki are having a meeting. However, when Freya's gaze falls on the bell she rushes outside and heads to a cell where some monsters are caged. She releases one of the monkey monsters and gives him an order. Soon, the festival is attacked by the monkey monster who seems to be after Bell and Hestia. Bell tries to fight against it but his sword is too fragile and breaks. To save Hestia, Bell locks her behind a door and then attracts the monster towards him, trying to fight him on his own but the monster is too strong for him as Bell seems to be at a dead end. In a flashback, we learn that after Bell's grandpa mysteriously disappeared, Bell had no one to rely on so he chose to become an adventurer no god was willing to accept a weak newbie like him but just when he was about to give up Hestia saves him and accepts him and her family. Back to the present time, the organizer of the festival, God Gainsher receives the news from his subordinates that a few monsters have been released from captivity and are attacking the citizens. So to take care of it he requests the guild to assign as many adventurers to take care of the monster. On the other side, Bell is almost done fighting the monster as his spirit breaks. He is reminded of the time when he was cornered by the Minotaur in the dungeon and it was Eyes who saved him but unfortunately, she is not here today on the good side. This time it's Hestia who saves him and takes him away. After a whole lot of useless talking just to increase screen time, she finally gives Bell his knife which is a special knife created only for Bell as it will grow alongside him. Hestia updates Bell's status as she links the knife with him. Bell, who has his brand new weapon and updated status, makes quick work of the monkey monster. He soon hears cheers from around and notices that a whole crowd is watching him and cheering him. Hestia jumps towards Bell as she congratulates him for defeating the enemy but quickly falls unconscious. While this is all happening, 
Freya who is dressed in her hood is watching this all from the top and mysteriously smiles at Belle as if she's lusting after him. Eyes has also been watching this from the side as she smiles too, as Belle can take care of such monsters on his own. At night, Belle is at the restaurant where Hestia is in a room resting. He thanks her for helping them at such a time to which she apologizes to him as it all happened because he just wanted to return her purse to her. She kisses him on the cheeks and runs away. While Belle is lost in his thoughts, he hears Hestia call for him as he runs into the room and notices that she is awake. Hestia tells Belle about the knife as it was crafted by Hephaestus whose shop he used to stare at whenever going by. But now he has a custom weapon crafted by the divine god herself. Belle thanks Hestia for this as he hugs her and starts crying. Belle requests Ina to grant him passage to the seventh floor as he has grown stronger. Ina doesn't believe him but after checking his stats she is shocked and agrees to let him go she mentions to him that he needs to find support for himself or rather find a team. She also requests him to come meet her the next day at a specific location. The next day, Belle is waiting for Ina at the location when she comes all dressed casually which makes Belle blush. After teasing him for a while, Ina takes Belle to Hephaestus's store where Belle meets Hestia who seems to be working part-time to pay off her debt. Hestia notices Ina so she warns her to not take advantage of Belle's innocence and seduce him. Ina takes Belle to the bottom floor where the tools are far cheaper than the above floor as they are made by novice blacksmith. Belle is looking for suitable equipment when his gaze falls on armor which is quite cheap in his budget so he buys it. After buying the things he wants, Belle and Ina return when she gives him an arm guard as a present. She wishes him good luck for his future adventures and requests him to not die on her. The next day, Belle is headed to the dungeon when he stumbles into a little beast girl, Lily, who asks Belle to take her with him on his adventure. She tells him that she is poor and weak and can only work as someone to carry his stuff. Belle accepts her offer and takes her to the dungeon with him. At the dungeon, seeing Belle so easily take care of the monsters, Lily is impressed but Belle tells her that it's all thanks to his knife. After their hunt, they return when Belle realizes that his knife is gone. He hurriedly runs off and starts to search for the knife. Lily who has stolen Belle's knife asks the shopkeeper to state the price of the knife but after inspecting the knife, the shopkeeper states that the knife isn't worth anything as it's not very well made. Belle is disappointed and returns. In a small alley, Lily is running off with Belle's knife in her hand when she is stopped by Sir's fellow waiter, Ryu, who stops her and takes the knife from her. Lily runs away but stumbles into Belle. Ryu returns the knife to Belle as he thanks her for returning it to him as he doesn't know what he would have done without it. The next day, Belle is on his way to the dungeon again when he asks Lily to accompany him. After the dungeon run Belle sells all of the monster's core that he farmed and gets a whole lot of money from it. He splits it evenly between him and Lily which surprises Lily as no one has ever been so kind to her. But Belle tells her that she deserves it as without her he wouldn't have been able to kill so many monsters. Hestia is washing away her sadness with alcohol as she mumbles about how Belle is cheating on her with other women. Even at home, she doesn't talk with Belle until he asks her if she's free and that he wants to take her out on a date. Hestia is glad to hear this as she grins and tells him that she's free today and that they can head to their date in the evening. To prepare for the date, Hestia heads to the divine bath to clean herself for the date. There she meets with other goddesses who ask if she's got a man and makes her spill the beans. In the evening, Belle is waiting for Hestia when she comes out dressed all splendidly and is about to walk away with him when the goddesses at the bath ambush them and take and start to molest Belle. Hestia saves them from these horny women and takes them away. By the time they have managed to make their distance from them, it is pretty late into the night but Belle tells Hestia that he enjoyed it and would love to come with her again next time. Later, Belle is doing his dungeon hunt with Lily when he is ambushed by a monster but Lily uses her magic blade to save him. Seeing her waste her precious blade to save him, he thanks her and treats her to lunch. Lily also mentions that she will not come tomorrow as she has to attend a family gathering. After dealing with dungeon goodies Belle is on his way back when he visits the restaurant to thank Ryu for returning his knife to him. He also asks her about hobbies and how she spends her free time. Sir answers that she likes to read books. On the topic of the book, she gives him a book on magic which was left by a customer today. Belle takes it home and reads it when suddenly he is pulled into a mysterious realm where a voice asks him why he wants magic and what he would do with it. After telling the answers that he wants to catch up with eyes and maybe even become a hero that he read in the books during his childhood, the voice claims that his answers are very childish but that's who he is and grants him the power. Hester returns home and finds Belle sleeping on the chair and wakes him. Belle wakes up when Hestia's eyes fall onto the book and she finds that it's a grimoire, a magic book that disappears after a reader reads it. Belle opens the book and finds out that it's indeed empty and panics. Hestia updates Belle's status and finds that he has unlocked magic, a spell called Firebolt. At night when Hestia is asleep Belle runs off to the dungeon to test his magic and when he tries it, he instantly falls in love with it and keeps using it till he is out of mana and falls. At that same time, 
Eyes is returning after defeating monsters when she finds Bell on the floor so she puts his head on his lap and caresses his hair. After Bell wakes up, he realizes that he is in Eyes' lap, so he rolls away in embarrassment. The next day, Bell returns the book to Sir and apologizes for the mistake but the owner of the restaurant throws it into the trash and assures Bell that he doesn't owe anything as it's the person's fault who left it here in the first place. After that Bell heads to the dungeon where he finds Lily being harassed by some adventurers. Soon she comes to him and he asks if she needs help but she denies his sincerity and tells him that it's okay. However, in her mind, she plans that it's time to move away from Bell. In a flashback, we learn that after Lily's parents died she took the work to become a supporter but she got bullied instead and was ripped off by adventurers so she hated them. After that, she started to hate them and started to save money to buy herself freedom. At present, Ina is sitting in a room with Loki when she asks her about the Soma family to which Lily belongs. Loki tells her that it's a family that worships alcohol and its members are all alcohol addicts. So to buy alcohol they are willing to even sell their mothers. On the other side, Belle is also talking to Hestia about accepting Lily and sheltering her for some time but Hestia is hesitant because according to what Belle told her she seems very suspicious and doesn't know whether they should trust her or not. However, seeing the confident look on Belle's face she stops. Later, Belle and Lily head to the dungeon when Lily suggests to her that Belle has grown stronger and that they should head to the 10th floor. Belle is hesitant at first but after some persistence from Lily, he accepts and heads to the 10th floor. Outside the dungeon, Ina finds Eyes and asks her to help Belle if he's in danger. Eyes, who seems distant, shows a reaction to Belle's name and accepts her request. Lily asks Belle to use a longer knife as the monsters are bigger than the top floors. Belle puts his knife into his pouch and uses the knife given by Lily. While he is fighting he notices that Lily has disappeared and suddenly some monster attracting bombs fall next to him. Soon he is surrounded by monsters and the next moment his pouch is fished by a string from Lily who says her final goodbyes to him. She copes herself by saying that it's Belle's fault for being too innocent and that he is an adventurer and all adventurers are bad. She is about to exit the floor when she is stopped by her previous teammates who are here to steal from her. They beat her, tear her clothes, steal everything and run away with her stuff while leaving her surrounded by killing ants. Lily is expecting to die as she has done so many evil things her whole life but despite that, she doesn't want to die and yells for help when Belle comes to her rescue and saves her. He tells her that after she disappeared, he was surrounded by monsters but a kind adventurer passed by and killed all of them. Lily hugs Belle and starts to cry while calling him stupid for being so kind and innocent but Belle tells her that he will save her once again even if she betrayed him. Belle takes Lily home and introduces her to Hestia. While Belle is away to fetch some tea, Hestia reminds Lily that she hates her but she won't do anything to her as she loves Belle too much and knows that Belle likes her. However, she also reminds her to protect Belle from evil people as he is too kind and innocent. Belle then heads to the Adventurer's Guild to look for Ina and thanks her when he finds that Eyes is with her too. Seeing this he tries to run away but this time Eyes is even faster and stops him. Eyes asks Belle as if he hates her which makes Belle's heart almost stop as he hurriedly tries to clear the misunderstanding. After talking for a while, they are walking outside when Eyes brings up the topic of whether Belle has someone to teach him to fight. Belle answers negatively so Eyes decides to teach him. They head to a secluded location where they both train. Their training goes on for a while Belle keeps on getting stronger and stronger and starts adapting to Eyes' movement. While they are training, in the dungeon a man is training a minotaur for some special purpose. He gives it a sword and duels with it till he can break his sword. After training for him for a lengthy period, he is finally satisfied and moves on to his next move. Belle has also finished his training for the day when he wakes up in Eyes' lap after getting knocked out. They both lay down for a while to recover their energy but Belle's eyes keep on falling onto Eyes' lips as his intrusive thoughts start to take him over. Fortunately, he stops and Eyes wakes up as they head back down to grab some food. They head to a shop and order some food when Belle notices that the stall owner is none other than Hestia who calls him out for being with Eyes behind her back and calls him a cheater. After Belle explains that he is training for only two more days with her when she finally calms down but warns Eyes to not seduce Belle. Later, Belle heads to the dungeon with Lily and notices that he has improved a lot. Even Lily notices it and praises him. She also asks him why he has been always battered up when coming to fight in the dungeons to which Belle just smiles and doesn't say anything. Later, Belle is at the Adventurer's Guild when he notices a huge crowd and his gaze falls onto a poster that states he is becoming a level 6 adventurer and her picture. Seeing this he leaves the place and is on his way home when Sir stops him and requests him to clean some dishes for her as she took a leave to do something. Belle is cleaning the dishes in the kitchen when Ryu comes in to help him as she asks if he has something in mind. Belle asks Ryu if she is an adventurer and she answers that indeed she used to be one so Belle asks her about leveling up and she answers that it's about defeating a monster way stronger than them and creating an achievement in their life. 
She also mentions that it's different for everyone and that he needs to understand his path and the kind of adventurer he wants to become. Later, Belle finishes up his training with eyes as he looks at her silhouette which seems to be getting further away from him. He wants to catch up to her even if it's a little closer. The next day, Belle heads to the dungeon with Lily and notices that the floor looks a bit empty and weird. It starts to creep him when he suddenly hears a sound and his gaze falls onto a minotaur with a broken horn standing in front of him with a giant blade. Fear overcomes Belle as he stands there looking at the Minotaur. Lily tries to shake him but he doesn't when suddenly the Minotaur attacks them. Fortunately Lily pushes them away but at the cost of injuring herself. Belle is finally awake as he hurriedly puts Lily away and engages in a fight with the Minotaur. However, despite all of his efforts, the Minotaur is too strong for him. Lily also wakes up and notices Belle fighting the Minotaur. Belle yells at Lily and asks her to run away. Lily is hesitant but hearing his anger she runs away calling for help. Belle also wants to run away but his pride won't let him as if he ran away. He would never be able to catch up to eyes ever again. So that's why he keeps on fighting the Minotaur despite being at a disadvantage. But the Minotaur is too strong and it pushes Belle down and is about to finish him when suddenly eyes comes in front of him and the monster stops. Belle notices this and is relieved that she is here to save him but he also curses himself for being weak. He notices that Eyes' teammates are also there with her as Batel once again makes fun of him and says that the pretty boy needs to be saved once again. Hearing this makes Bell's blood boil as he stands up and asks Eyes to stand away as he once again confronts the Minotaur himself. Bate bets that he won't last a few minutes when Lily who brought them here asks him to save him but due to too much blood loss she faints so Rivera, one of Eyes' teammates heals her and puts her away. Bate is about to step in and save Bell, but Eyes stops him and assures him that Bell can take care of it by himself. Her words are indeed proven to be true as Bell slashes at the Minotaur and makes him vulnerable before shooting firebolts at him to blow him up. But this also leaves him out of mana as he falls unconscious standing. Eyes' party members are shocked that a level 1 newbie slayed a Minotaur all on his own. So they check his stats on his back and find that all of his stats are at S max. While all of this was happening, Freya was watching Bell slay the Minotaur and orgasming just seeing him fight. It turns out that all of this was planned by her as she wanted to accelerate his rate of progress. Bell wakes up and finds Hestia sitting beside him as she levels up his stats. Bell has finally turned level 2 and even unlocked a new skill, Argonaut. She congratulates him for his enchantment and also mentions that she will not be home today as she is going to the god gathering as she also has a leveled up child in her family. Later at night she comes back and tells him that she got a name for him. However, unlike Belle's expectations the name was just a little rookie, which saddens him a little bit. He is at the tavern with Lily when Sir and Ryu join him to celebrate his leveling up. Belle is happy that now that he has leveled up he can enter new floors and beat even stronger enemies. However, Ryu stops him on his feet as she mentions that the floor below the tenth one is filled with dangers and that he needs a bigger team for it. Now that Belle has leveled up his previous equipment is not that useful so he needs new armor. So he heads to Hephaestus's store to look for armor but he doesn't find any armor from the smith Welf again. So he heads to the counter and asks the manager. Hearing the name Welf, the man standing near Belle laughs as he tells him that Welf is him. Belle is shocked and praises the armor that he made. After talking for a while, Welf agrees to become the exclusive weaponsmith for Belle's party only if he lets him join his party. Belle agrees as he needs someone for the party anyway. Later, Belle introduces Welf to Lily as they head to the dungeon to clear up some monsters. There Belle learns about Welf's family as once upon a time they were one of the best smiths in the world who could craft magic weapons but they soon declined and became a fallen family. Welf doesn't press on this matter as some monsters attack them so they clear them out. Belle also notices that his power has grown way stronger and that he can fight easily now. While Belle is lost in his new power, he hears a loud voice nearby and notices that a giant monster is about to attack Lily so he uses a firebolt at the enemy which shoots him. Belle looks at his palm and notices that the magic he released is much different than he has seen before. Later, Hestia tells him that it's the effect of his new skill that allows him to tear through difficulties. It's a very rare skill that is specially made for novice heroes as she teases him. She also tells him more about Welf's background and how he used to be someone who could craft magic weapons but he mysteriously stopped one day and became an outcast. Later, Welf invites Belle to his workshop to tweak his equipment. There he tells him about how he dislikes magic weapons as they don't represent the user's strength instead normal weapons are the best part of their users. He uses the minotaur horn that Belle got from defeating the minotaur and crafts a dagger for him, as he also asks Belle to treat him as a friend just like he treats Lily. Belle and his party are on the middle floors taking care of enemies when they notice that the enemies have increased in numbers and they are quickly surrounded. Things get worse when suddenly another party passes by them, attracting the monsters behind towards Belle and his party members. Belle and others try to get away too but they are stopped as the enemies are too fast and forced to fight with them however, quickly their stamina runs out and they are attacked once again but this time it's from both sides. 
Things get even worse as the dungeon floor gives up on them crashing them below. Hastja, who has noticed that it's been too late, assigns a mission to the guild to rescue Bell and his party. At the same time, another god Micah brings in followers to apologize for the crime they committed. It turns out that the party that passed by Bell was his children. Hastja doesn't hold it against him as she just asks him to let his strongest children look for Bell. Just when they are planning to rescue Bell, Hermes, another god who is a friend of Hastja, decides to head along with his child Asfi even though gods are not allowed in the dungeon. Hastja also decides to tag along. Bell and his team have fallen to the bottom floors where their only option is to head to the 18th floor where the area is free from monsters. Bell and his party are moving towards the lower floors however, running and killing monsters have made them too exhausted as Welf and Lily fall unconscious due to too much exhaustion. So Bell has no option but to leave their stuff behind and carry both of them and just run. However, the real problem is the 17th floor where the boss, Goliath, is. However, according to Lily it's been taken care of by Eyes and her party so it shouldn't respond this soon. However, when Bell arrives at the 17th floor he notices that the boss is starting to respond so he just makes a quick sprint and barely manages to reach floor 18 where he just falls unconscious. Later, Bell wakes up and finds Eyes in front of him as he gets embarrassed. Eyes assures him that his friends are safe and that the leader wants to see him. She takes him to meet Finn, their commander who is surprised to see a newbie like Bell survive the middle floors and reach the 18th floor in one piece. Suppressing the urge to sing, Bell heads back to his team where they both have woken up and are fine. Later at night, Hestia and the others arrive too and Micah's family apologizes to Bell for doing what they did to him but Bell passes it off as he would have done the same if his party was in danger. Now that the mistakes are cleared up, they prepare to rest one day before going up after Eyes and her party have cleared the boss once again. The next day, Bell is lost when he accidentally stumbles into Ryu who is bathing and nearly loses his life. After clearing up the misunderstanding she takes Bell with him to pay tribute to her party which died here due to a scheme set by another rival family. After their death, Ryu used all sneaky tactics to kill all of them till no one was left. This made her banned from the guild and she lost everything but the restaurant owner Mama Mia took her in and saved her. Bell is saddened to hear her story and assures her that what she did was not wrong which makes Ryu happy as she tells Bell that he is too kind. Later, Bell heads to his tent where he discovers a letter that states that Hestia was kidnapped by some adventurers so he runs to the location mentioned. After arriving at the location, the adventurer asks him to duel him one versus one and the person who wins will live and who loses will die. The man then turns invisible and fights Bell. Hermes is watching this all from the top when Asfi calls him out for doing all of this. He tells her that he is not doing it for himself but for someone else and that Bell needs to learn about human nature if he wants to grow. Bell quickly learns how to fight the guy just by sensing his aura and kicking him out of his invisibility when Hestra arrives and stops everyone using her divine power. However, just after that, the whole floor starts to shake as if a divine punishment is about to befall the earth. The divine punishment is none other than the Goliath boss from the 17th floor who has come down even stronger. To defeat the boss all the adventurers in the town team up to slay him but despite their countless efforts, they aren't able to put a dent in the boss as it keeps on regenerating. However, in the end, Bell uses the ultimate power from his skill Argonaut to finally defeat the boss and write a new chapter in his heroic book. The show ends with Hermes watching this all happen from the top of the mountain which almost makes him orgasm from the excitement as he praises Zeus for leaving behind such an amazing great-grandson, thus marking the beginning of a new time for heroes, a chance to create a whole new story, the story of the familiar myth. That's all for today. If you enjoyed our video, give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. 